If you lead, I'll just tell you where to turn. Dude, he's having it, mate. Hey guys, it's Thomas here. So, we've had a really, really long day. We've got to make this really, really short. We're at the uh, AJS Owners Club. Not the Chinese AGS, it's the original AJS's. Um, so yeah, really, really, really cool place. We have to make it real quick. Basically, I've done the times and I think we're going to be five minutes late from our award. I think we're going to get there about five past ten, so we have to fly. But yeah, long trip, long day, but we'll keep you posted when we get to the final checkpoint. Oh mate, we're cutting it down. We're literally like almost there. We keep racing like this, we will make it. Or just past. Yeah, just down this country lanes. Three minutes. I've shaved it down to three past. We're actually hacking. This is mental. This is so intense, mate, honestly. That's it. We're getting there. We've got a left and a right. This is my... Oh, what well, up? I think so. Straight on. This better fucking be it. Two minutes past, we're estimated. One minute away. Two minutes late, that's fucking awesome, considering we had like a ten minute fucking... This is it down here... Through the tunnel... Yeah, that's it. Yeah, we're here. We're two minutes late! We're two minutes late! You do know that we just shaved 10 minutes off from Kettering on 125s. Oh, super! Go and get it, go and get it, Brett. <laughs> does, does, doesn't your watch say uh, 9.59? Yeah, just about. Just about. <sighs> it's the... Yeah! Hello everybody, you okay? It's Thomas here. 
So, what a crazy last ride. It was absolutely mental. Um, obviously, we managed to somehow shave 10 minutes off of a 40-minute uh, journey. Uh, to, we literally came in at um, 9.59 and just slammed the bikes down and got the book signed before. So we literally came in by the last second somehow. Um, we said on, we had some unfortunate delays, you know, you know, it's just things that couldn't be helped. But we've been on the road non-stop, and uh, yeah, it's been a really, really good ten hours. I must say, thoroughly enjoyed the uh, the last three, four hours. That was short carriageway. It was uh, really, really good. Yeah, totally insane. It the was. Last, uh, what? The last three checkpoints, when we knew we were going to be late, we had to obviously just go hell for leather. Obviously not breaking any laws, because that would be wrong, but, yeah, of um, course. but I've never done so much knee down action on a 125. <laughs> yeah, just going into, the round, going into the roundabouts and just, yeah, just not even la la laying Sometimes off. Sometimes wondering if you were going to come out the other <laughs> side. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, time working. And the sat now fortunately, took us away from Leicester. Was it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, took us away from Leicester and took us down these country lanes, like 50 mile an hour roads. And I don't know what it is about up north, but the population is, n is so little on the road in comparison to Brighton. I mean, this time of night, it'd be absolutely jam packed. So, we're going to load the bikes up into the Sinners van. That's another job. And then uh, we've got about a three and a half hour journey back to Brighton. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's really good. Thank you to everyone who actually watched the. Uh, watched the live video and you know watched our progress and you know it's rooting for us we got some really nice messages uh, through the Sinish Facebook page and uh, you know we had a lot of support from people before we even started this trip yeah. but highly recommend this next year to anyone that wants to get involved um, we're gonna have a team to do it next year so if you want to get involved and you've got a Sinish get in touch with us because yeah. we can start anywhere around the country and we can like hook up with other people yeah. as they're going around as well so it's good idea well I say it's the two of us and it was brilliant you know yeah it was yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah it was really really good so you know if you could get your friends involved you know you don't even have to own a sinus you can own any bike you want i i we was the only two on one two fives that i've seen today everyone else had you know big thousand cc bikes and um yeah it was it was brilliant i mean even from the special uh, task this morning you know the rf outmaneuvered every someone else's bike you know though I mean, i've been riding for four years and stuff you know with the um, slalom and the speed trials, it just, you know, the RF has well, performed so well. You know, I've been running for 10 hours, I'm not even uncomfortable, which is just brilliant. But anyway, I hope you have a good evening. We've got a crack on, we've got a, a long ride ahead of us. But anyway, have a good evening. Hi, I'm Mike Gary from Sinus Motorcycles. Hey, I'm Thomas here from Sinis as well, and uh, yeah, this video is just about the National Road Rally. Um, yeah, so we thought we'd do some questions and answers um, about the rally, about the bikes, um, and how well they cope, that sort of thing. Um, first thing is about the rally. The National Road Rally itself runs once a year, um, and it's run by the Auto Cycle Union, the ACU. They do quite a few events on the same day. Um, I think they do like a nighttime rally. Uh, bronze rally, silver, gold, special gold, which is, or well, we didn't do special gold. No, we did just the gold, just gold, which is so, that's 290 miles, the special gold. Um, 540. Yeah, yeah, and it includes the test that we actually did in the morning, or Thomas did in the morning, um, but we just did it for the sake of doing it really. We, yeah. Um, yeah, so it's, it's well worth entering. I think it's £30 to enter no matter what course you do. Um, and then at the end of it, when you complete it, you send off the information like we've done and now, and then they send you like a, a trophy of some sort. I'm not quite sure about that. But the idea is, as like you've probably heard before, you have a certain amount of mileage, you have a certain amount of checkpoints, they're called control points, that you have to get through. Um, and it's not as easy as it I is. thought it would be initially. Uh, even the planning stage is, is fun, really fun, because it's actually quite difficult trying to find how many gates you've got to get through, how many control points. You can't go through the same one twice, and you want to start and end roughly in the same direction, kind of thing. Um, so it's yeah, it's really good planning, isn't it? When you get to gold, it's going to be difficult. You can't start and finish at the same spot. Uh, you have a minimum amount of checkpoints you have to reach. Uh, yeah, it gets a bit more difficult, and it's high mileage, and it's night time as well. Um, 
we did obviously we didn't do a full night time run. Um, to be honest, I'm quite thankful for that because it was such a cold night. I think it would froze. It was yeah, yeah, it was really cold. Wasn't it? I mean, but we'll definitely do it again next year. We're going to do it again. Um, we've worked out a deal where if you anybody member of the public with a cynic wants to join us, because uh, obviously it'd be quite good publicity for us, uh, we can get you a fiver off the entry price, which I know is not a, a massive amount, but it's 25 quid to get in. Um, and also, you know, that's probably fuel for about half the event. Yeah, and we'll probably do the daytime bulb again, because the nighttime, I think, like you say, it was cold, and I think you would want a bigger CC to do it, really, because you get, we got tired, didn't we, yeah. for 10 hours. It, what the issue was is when people on big bikes, there's something around the bush here, you can go 100 miles an hour or faster, and you do get to the checkpoint, so you can sit there and have a, you know, have a biscuit, have a cup of tea, and chat to people at the checkpoints. Yeah. When it was on 125s, we, we, it was hard to put up time when you're maxing out 60 um, and you go down to 60 mile an hour road, you can't pull any time back when you lost it. Yeah, um, so and everybody wants to talk to you, don't they? The control yeah, yeah. points, because you're riding 125, everybody wants to have a chat with you. In the first couple of control points, that's great. And then all of a sudden you think, hang on a minute, I've pulled up, I've spent 15 minutes here just chatting about a bike, and now I've got to go, and I'm late. And, and that happened a few times then before we realised that we've just got to cut people off. Yeah, and say, I've got to go, see you later. Because <laughs> yeah. um, it, it, you know, it's not legal to set times where you're going to be doing 100 miles an hour at the end of the day, they work it out to a speed where everyone can do it. Think about it, that's about 32.5 on an hour is constant. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so you know, that's pretty average. Uh, but by the time you stop at each checkpoint, it takes 10 minutes, you know, the time does rank up a little bit. And also, you work it out to 290 miles, but that's their matrix telling you 290 miles, which isn't actually mm. realistic, which is good in a way because it adds an element of excitement, but I think we probably covered about 360, yeah. 370 miles. Yeah, especially around the twisties, and you know, that, this is, their matrix is dead straight, and you know, when you get up to uh, the, the peak districts, it's anything but. Yeah, you're stuck on a tractor, yeah. that's it, you're wasting time straight away. Yeah, yeah you're just trying to get past so it. At the, at the start of the rally, it was really you know, relaxed, chilled out, you know, we've got loads of time. <laughs> By the time we got halfway round, I kind of worked out the figures and I realised that we, we really had to pull, we had to put that back and start, you know, rack, rack, rack out the miles and speed and just, you know, just get on with it. Um, I can't remember if I was, I think we got three quarters of the way through the rally. And we topped up for fuel, not that we needed to, it was just we were getting to half the tank, you know, just a bit under. And, you know, we, we just wanted to be sure, so we just bring the bikes back up again. Um, what did it come to? It came to about, I think it came to about 14, 15 pounds it cost us for the entire rally. And that was just under 400 miles. So, you yeah, know, it's really, and, that, and that's, flat, that's flat out, you know, full throttle everywhere. So if you're, you know, the only person we're using it for commuting uh, to work on back, but this bike's absolutely brilliant. I mean, I've been using the red one for about two months now uh, while my personal bike was off the road. And, you know, I'd only have to fit up every week and a half, two weeks. Um, yeah, that, the, the RS was actually meant to be released in May this year. In fact, I think it was March, the first day. Um, but it was delayed to the factory. First of all, we delayed it because um, we wanted to change a couple of things on the bike. Uh, I took one to a trade show in January, showed people and said this wouldn't be it because we're doing a few changes, which we've done. Uh, then we had to wait for a sample to come over because we wanted to test it. Started testing, um, we racked up a couple of thousand on each yeah. before we realised that we really wanted the bike in. We wanted it in, but we've got to put mileage on it. Um, lots, or let's just say several other importers don't do this. They just buy the bike in and sell it and find out from the retail customer at the end of the day, yeah, when exactly. it goes wrong, what the major common faults are. And we don't like that, basically. At the end of the day, I think that's unfair to someone to spend their money and have to find out that they're the guinea pig. Um, so we do the testing. We enjoy it anyway, so it's great fun. Um, but the, yeah, the delay has been, I think it's going to be near the end of September now, it's going to be released. Um, because also the factory, which is the Yamaha factory, um, they um, underwent like a refurbishment. Um, it wasn't meant to affect the side of the factory where these are made, but it did. Um, so it pushed it back another few weeks. So we are quite frustrated that we haven't been able to get them in quick enough, have we? Um, but it's a shame because we think they'll, we think they'll be a huge seller. They're an excellent bike. Um, 
Yeah, we don't get, I still get emails every day and you know, this morning I had someone ring up saying, I'm just passed for CBT, I'm, I'm heart set on the RS, you know, I had to kind of let them down over the phone. I think, <laughs> you know, can hear the field of disappointment is, ah, I really wanted this, I thought it would be first week August. So, you know, it is unfortunate, but. We're yeah. suffering as well. Yeah, we want to the same as well. Yeah, because we think it's great. Yeah, it's a brilliant little pie. I mean, um, uh, I've got uh, one of the questions I was asked, um, and one of the questions, it's more of a, uh, an insult actually. <laughs> Somebody <laughs> said that the, um, the forks look tiny, forks are really, really small. And I, I thought, oh, they don't. And, uh, and somebody else said it then, and I thought, this is really strange. And I measured them, and they're the same size as the 883 Harley Davidson Sportster. Uh, so I think if that bike can handle the same size forks, then uh, these are absolutely fine. Yeah. Uh, best part of the event was obviously rolling up the bomb into the spare. That was like, yeah, that, that was probably the most exciting, like the last one. stage. Yeah, and it, you know, we have, we have people who are watching our live video, um, you know, for the last half. You know, all through the day, and they were waiting at the last checkpoint. Yeah. It was, uh, you know, they said they saw the video, it was a really quick short one, it's outside the AJS centre, it's not the Chinese AJS, it's like the original AJS it's from back in the day, um, some sort of museum area. Um, and I've done a real quick video outside there, and we literally was going to be, oh, well, we worked out be about seven minutes late, so somehow we shaved about eight, nine minutes off, uh, off this half hour journey. Um, which is crazy really, but we really had to, because if you're late, you generally don't get anything. You don't get anything, you're gonna you get it late. You feel, if that's, that's it, that's it. The control closes and that's... That's your finish, that's it, you're done. Yeah. So, so we were... We couldn't have made it any more exciting in the yeah. last section at all, would we? Yeah, I mean, uh, on the way back down some really, you know, middle of nowhere country lane, um, the road sort of splits, so it went straight and then diesel to the right. And uh, I went to the right, which I really meant to go, and uh, don't know if we had an intercom problem or something, or my fish so into me, just had, had passed on the straight, and then there was like, this little gravel track that came back down, so I came to the stop, and he, uh, he uh, to me, going past at 60 mile an hour, it just looked like a little, little grass verge, but he was going through it, and he said, it's obviously packed with potholes. Yeah. And, uh, full, on, full on MX track. <laughs> Um, we were expecting to sort of like the next day to have them all serviced and find out the plugs were wrecked and things like that, but uh, they were mm -hmm. great, absolutely yeah. fine. So, yeah, you know, next, you know, as soon as we got back to Brighton, I just offloaded the RFs that's outside the uh, outside mic, so I just rode it back home, you know, and just went back to using it as a daily. It still hasn't been serviced or touched since, and I've been back to another 600, 700 miles since then. Um, you know, load you know, should be a bit more. You know, more maintenance and stuff, but these are test models at the end yeah. of the day. We will, not to be funny, they're meant to be run into the ground, but we'll see how, how they act and uh, you know, what condition they're in uh, after this part of use. And these, both these bikes have been you know, thrashed and left outside ever since they got out of the crate. So, you know, for them to do all this and you know, just still carry on, it needs to be used as dailies by, you know, by staff members. Um, and they're still going fine, so yeah. you know, it's good. I mean, even for myself, you know, for us, it's only a bit bike, so I had an SV650, and I've got two, two KTMs. And, you know, they, the, the bikes handle, it's not better, because they're so lightweight and they're so well planted, you can just really, really hang out, you know, just, it's yeah, just brilliant. Mm -hmm. and that's proved on the handling course. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. The guy said you were like 10 seconds quicker than everybody that's else. You have a scheme on that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's it. I mean, 10 seconds faster than anyone else that day, and uh, yeah, you know, I've been running for a few years, but it's because I was on the spot, I was just so lightweight, and you know, but once you, once you do a full test, they teach you how to do slow riding, you know, the back brake clutch control, and, and keeping the revs up, of course, really easily on the spot. Um, thank you very much for watching, and thanks for, you know, the other two parts of this video are also on Facebook and YouTube. If you join us on Facebook, um, what I want to do is, like, if you can send us some real high resolution pictures, or the best pictures you've got of you and your Sinus, or just your Sinus bike, um, the best ones are sending t shirts out. So we've got quite a lot of different t shirts, lanyards, key rings, things like that. So, by all means, you know, send us pictures um, so we can use them on Facebook and that. We just like to see happy customers, really. And I'm glad that you send you out a t shirt and uh, see what we've got we can send out to you. Uh, but like I say, thanks very much for watching. Um, and I hope so that you can join us next year. If you've got any questions, uh, join us on Facebook and leave the questions below the video. It's best bet. I'll answer them. Thomas will answer them. Okay, so thanks very much.